so the first paper um, will be uh, introduced and given by uh, Laura Barbeau, and uh, the authors uh, are Laura and uh, Andrea Sharnus. And the presentation, uh, sorry, I have the title here, is Services in a Research Infrastructure, an attempt to review current definition and future, um, I miss a word here, <laughs> and, and future. Um, uh, yeah, thanks, Laura. Thanks a lot. And um, so in this presentation, um, Laura and Andrea will tell us more about services in research infrastructures, what they are, and how actually they support the research practices. And the second uh, paper is uh, given by Stefan Budapur, and uh, the title is Clarity E, Aligning Two Research Infrastructure Experiencing Experiences and Challenges. And here, Stefan uh, will tell us more about, the, it will, be, will give us a reflection on the merging of the Clarion, uh, the A and Daria, the A inf national infrastructures. So Lor, um, with no further ado, I'll give the word to you now. So thank you very much for having us today because I will present, but it's a result of, uh, of a work that I prepared with uh, Andrea Scharnhorst, so who is also here today. Uh, with us in this uh, Zoom room, and it's actually the result of a uh, of, uh, range of consultation among different uh, DIA bodies, so the Joint Research Committee, the DIA Coordination Office, and also the Board of Directors. And the attempt here is to review the current definitions of, um, of services and their implication for research infrastructures, and especially for DIA. And um, what we did is that internally, we, we worked on a kind of a white paper, so it's still not online uh, yet, still in a form of a, of a Google Doc. But uh, the, the idea this morning is a, is a bit to summarize uh, what we did um, uh, within this internal reflection. So I will start um, first by uh, trying to um, not summarize, but uh, give a first idea of what services means for, uh, for research infrastructures in general, then we will focus on DIA services. And I would like to open um, by a question, how can we collectively uh, clarify the DIA services offer? So this is the plan for this a bit more than 10 minutes, I'm, I'm afraid, but if we have time, it's okay then. Um, so first, some general statements um, for different reasons that we will also touch upon uh, today. Services are central to ERICS, and the citation from the from the S3 from the last S3 strategy report actually illustrates this quite well. S3 is a research infrastructures, are facilities, resources, or services of a unique nature. Uh, somehow, um, we will also discover that when we speak about services, most of the time uh, we actually speak about IT services. This is especially true in the EOS context, where this everything as a service approach is um, developed or um, was guiding at, at least the first uh, development of the, of the EOSC. This can be a kind of limitation while trying to cover all DIA assets. So this is also maybe something that we can uh, discuss further in the, during the discussion session. And um, another important idea when discussing services and research infrastructures is the distributed nature of uh, the research infrastructures we are speaking about. Because one of the main challenges is to find a good balance between the different uh, nodes of the of the network to ensure a good uh, service provision uh, to to our communities. This is why we looked into uh, other res research infrastructures organization uh, to see how they were dealing with these questions of of services. And what we can see is that there are different um, approaches uh, that end up to different results when presenting these services to the users. So we looked um, mainly in, in some, no internal documentation, but uh, more some websites. So this is a CESDA uh, example. And I, I really like it because um, what they did is that they present their, their, a kind of internal uh, operation of clarification of their portfolio. You can see the, the timeline they, they, they present this and they also took into consideration the different uh, stakeholders um, that their services uh, can address. So you end up with a very clear uh, overall picture, but in the same time, it's, it's a very centralized approach where only 10 services are uh, presented to, to the user. So it might 
be not exactly what we are looking for if we think about clarification of uh, the higher services offer. Uh, we also looked into uh, other examples. Uh, so on the right side of the screen, you can see the, the not only research infrastructures, actually, because we also looked into uh, EOSC as a, as a federation of, of infrastructures, if, if we might say. Um, and you can see that the categories uh, used to classify the services within the EOSC um, are already setting the tone for, for what you will, you will find in, in this catalog. So um, this is this is where we can see that uh, uh, using categories is already uh, guiding the user towards a certain type of services, already making some choices as well. Um, Clarin approach is very interesting because if you uh, visit the Clarin services website, you can see a mix between individual services and collection of resources. So it's also an interesting um, approach here. And one of the outputs of this work could be to um, update what we have at the moment uh, on the DIA tools and services uh, web page because at the moment we have a kind of ad hoc list uh, with not the categories uh, the categories that are used to classify the services and tools you can find is not really clear so this is one of the output that uh, uh, we could um, we could implement um, soon. So if, if we um, try to focus now a bit more on, on DIA services uh, and to try to clarify what we are talking about, first, I would like to highlight here the mission of uh, DIA. So you can find it on the, on the top of this slide. The mission of DIA is to, as it's stated in the strategic plan, is to empower arts and humanities research communities with digital methods to create, connect, and share knowledge about culture and society. So it's really to support community and um, how can we, uh, how can this uh, support, um, how can, can we manifest this support? Let's say it's also by providing services, not only. So here is, I think it's also very important to always keep in mind when we are speaking about services that an infrastructure, research infrastructure is, is a, a, this social and technical um, mix, and this is what uh, makes infrastructures so unique in, in, the, in the landscape. Um, but services are central in that, in that respect as well. And, um, and they are actually already there in, in, in among the DIA assets, among, among the network. So where, where are they coming from? Where do they come from, these DIA services? First of all, um, members, uh, countries, so members of, of the DIA network are already service providers for their national communities, sometimes uh, beyond their national communities. And then this idea to scale up a service broader than its original uh, audience is really an interesting idea. When we are speaking about DIA services, it's also a challenge uh, sometimes. Um, these services are most of the time reported as uh, in-kind contributions, so to be uh, officially part of the DIA budget. So this uh, operation is, is uh, done via the registration in the in-kind contribution tool. Services are also produced within project, and here we don't have a clear workflow to, to, to ensure their sustainability once the project is over. So this is maybe something that we could also look into more in details. Services are sometimes um, developed uh, also within working groups, and here's the same. Maybe we could clarify the workflow to ensure that, uh, that um, uh, we could collectively organize the, the best uh, sustainability option for, for the services that are produced within working groups. So you can see that we are dealing with a kind of diversity here. And uh, there were already a lot of work uh, that has been done uh, in, in previous projects to, to make sense of, of this diversity, to try to identify um, how we could uh, organize, classify, or identify gaps in the, in the global offer. So I won't enter into, into the details of all the reports that I mentioned in, in this slide, but something that can be highlighted because it's uh, already something that we are using and that is uh, very powerful 
is a work that has been done uh, within the Humanities at Scale project with the development of the DIA reference architecture that is used as a background for the data model of the in-kind contribution tool. So you can see on the right uh, corner of the, of the uh, top corner of the slide that we already are using uh, four different subtypes to describe services in the DIA context uh, for the in-kind contribution tool. So resource access, data hosting service, processing services, and, and support service. And what we uh, did um, and what we are doing, because it's still an ongoing uh, task, let's say, is to try to consolidate information. So information coming from the in-kind contribution tool, coming from the previous projects, coming from working groups. So we started this kind of internal list uh, you can see a screenshot, so it's, it's a Google sheet, huh, basically, um, where we were looking uh, for information uh, regarding who, uh, where, for how long, with which kind of funding, is there a DARIA branding, a national one or a DARIA EU one, um, and um, to continue and, and to, to, for the next step in, for, this, uh, for this establishment of, the, of this listing, we probably need to be supported by a proper methodology. So we looked into some um, standards for IT service management. Uh, probably the most suitable would be uh, FITSM because it's already used in the infrastructures communities, also in the EOS context. So this could be a standard and, and a methodology that could help us to finalize um, this, this internal portfolio. One example, just to, to give you, uh, maybe to, to make it more concrete, the kind of information we were looking for. So it, the uh, DH Coast Registry. Um, so if you don't know it, I strongly recommend that you visit the website. It's a very uh, beautiful one. Um, so it's it, the DH Coast Registry is a platform that, that provides an overview of the DH teaching activities. It's a service that is sustained both by Clarin and Daria. So it's also an interesting point it's in our discussion here. So it's based on a kind of shared governance model, but it's also an in-kind from Austria. And the intellectual maintenance of this service is ensured by a dedicated working group. So it, I think it's a very good example because it, it makes the best of uh, the existing DIA channels to ensure a, a good service provision. So it's not that we want to reinvent the, the, the wheel or, or to, to set up a new complicated workflows or whatever. It's really relying on, on, on what, what is already there in, in the DIA context. But um, how could we collectively maybe continue this exercise of, of clarification uh, for the DIA services portfolio or, or catalog? This distinction between portfolio and catalog is actually something that comes from the FITSM uh, vocabulary. So if, as I understood it, and I'm not a specialist of, of the IT service management, uh, but the, the portfolio is the internal listing that uh, you are doing for your own, on your own. So this kind of Google sheet if, if we uh, would improve it. And the catalog is the um, uh, public version of it. So what you display to your end user. So it's not that all the services we are are actually of interest for the, for the researchers part of, of the DIA network, for example. Um, so how we could continue collectively to, uh, to, to clarify this uh, services uh, catalog for DIA. Um, probably moving towards a service policy. So what we have identified based on, on the work that was, um, that was done these last two years um, and the different consultation is that we are probably missing uh, two main elements to, to do so. So a policy-oriented prioritization or ranking of services to be able to identify some criteria to, um, to prioritize the services uh, within the DIA context and also a professional service management, again, where we would be able to identify the roles and uh, the processes, uh, to clarify the processes to, uh, to, to move um, further or to, to clarify. Because the, the idea, and it's, it's here on the top of this slide, is really to move from a collection of services toward a network of uh, complementary, partially interoperable and well-used services. Um, to do so, again, I, I really believe that we can rely on the existing um, assets. So we would probably need to distinguish between uh, operational services, so the services that are um, 
used for the, let's say, internal coordination of, of, uh, of the IASA network of services. Uh, the core services the, that could be the, the services that address the, the global DIA community and all the other services that are still contributing to the infrastructures, but maybe not at the same scale or maybe not with the same goal. Uh, so this could be the kind of distinctions we, we could try to um, implement. Um, all of this move would also require maybe um, a slight shift in the way uh, in-kind contributions are managed uh, with maybe more guidance from the, um, uh, the EU uh, layer uh, towards the nationals, but this is also something that um, has to make sense for the national nodes of, of the network. So it's really here, the, the national nodes and national coordinators are really key actors and, and key players in, in this discussion. Um, as I already mentioned, we would need to uh, clarify workflows and responsibilities with this uh, goal to ensure the, the collective uh, sustainability and collective maintenance of, of, the, of the existing service. And um, uh, the idea would really be to work on the coherence uh, of the services uh, offered within DIA, so with the national uh, partners of DIA, but also with our uh, sisters' infrastructures, if, if, if I may say, uh, to ensure also the coherence of, of the offer among the, the different uh, SSH research infrastructures. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to introduce. Maybe we can uh, uh, discuss further different points during the, the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thanks a lot. So Stefan is uh, the next presenter, so I'll give the word to you. Hi, Stefan here. Hello to everyone and good morning. So we are now leaving the European level and going down to the national level, in this case, Germany. And yeah, have a closer look uh, at one example for such services Laura talked about and see Hopefully, the difficulties related uh, to them when you want to merge them or even have um, common quality standards or to compare them. So, later to this, I am Stefan Buddenboom and I work as a project manager in the research and development department at the Göttingen State and University Library. And since 2011, we are a leading partner in Daria.de, the German branch of Daria and currently co-lead with the University of Tübingen, Claria.de, which is the subject of my talk today. So in the next 10 minutes, I will introduce Claria.de to you, draw the larger picture of challenges for us, and present to you in detail one example from the technical area, the unified search of Claria. All of the presented information is available from our project website linked here, or then for the technical details in a DARIA working paper, which will be published early next year. So Claria.de is the German merger of DARIA.de and Clarin.de, and it's funded by the Federal German Ministry of Education and Research. And both research infrastructures provide resources for partly similar audiences. So you might say that DARIA is aiming at researchers in the field of humanities and cultural sciences, to a large part working with textual resources. And it's also important to keep in mind that uh, DARIA, although is a very much community-driven initiative, it also provides many infrastructural services, such as an authentication and authorization infrastructure, the Confluence wiki spaces, Hexgrid, or the GeoBrowser, to name only a few ones. Clarin.d, on the other hand, is focusing on language-related research in the humanities and social sciences, and it follows a center-oriented organizational approach, where the collections and resources are closely bound to its curators. This is a difference to Daria. Um, Clarin.d and Daria.de have been working with each other for quite some time now. For example, in the technical advisory board on questions of technological coherence. So looking at the challenges, what kind of challenges do we face? I list three categories here on this slide, but I won't explain each one. Most of the points 
I think won't come as a surprise for you. And I will pick out one example from the area of technological challenges in my talk. Um, what's important to keep in mind, and it's obvious, different research communities and interests are often the reason for different solutions, which you have to keep in mind when discussing merging of infrastructures. So for generic infrastructure components, synergies may be quick of the mark. For research near components, this is usually not the case. But let's get into the details with this example, the search of Claria. So on the following three slides, I will introduce you to the three main searches of Clarin and Daria. Um, the Daria DE generic search, short the GS, you see already here on this slide. Then you have the Clarin federated content search, the FCS, and finally the Clarin virtual language observatory, the VLO. All three searches sum up well to well over 2.2 million resources, which are potentially relevant to digital humanists. And we aimed to merge them within Claria or to provide access to them, to be more precise. The generic search currently lists over 220 collections with well over 1.2 million resources. And the resources are usually collections with descriptive metadata often directing the user to the holding institution. So on this slide, for instance, you see the text grid repository and you may notice there that Daria usually is not the holder of the resources, which is another difference to Clarin. And the generic search is even provided as customized version for other initiatives. Um, the Forschungsverbund Marbach, Weif Marbach Weimar Wolfenbüttel to mention here. So we have uh, rebranded and customized uh, the search for them. And I'd also like to highlight uh, one example, uh, one important aspect of the generic search to illustrate uh, for you the level of uh, challenges when talking about merge. The search comes as a component of the Daria DE data federation architecture. And this consists of the collection registry, a repository, a data modeling environment, and so on. And all of this is seamlessly interwoven with other tools such as the geo browser and all of this then integrated into the AAI. So why is this a benefit for researchers? Well, they may not only search and read the data with our generic search, but they can create their own data, archive it in a persistent way, create collections and share all of this with their colleagues. So Daria, DE is offering the search within a deeply integrated service environment. And this makes merger concepts a bit complicated to say the least. This approach is also illustrated by the screenshot of the text grid repository here on the slide on the right. Um, there you notice uh, the embedment of the Clarin language resources switchboard and the Voyon tools. And these are two non daria tools. So now let's have a look at the Clarin site. And you may notice that the same search string as for the generic search here results in a different way of presenting the results to the user. For instance, here showing you full text excerpts. The federated content search or FCS comes with 34 endpoints at 16 institutions and is querying 4,000 collections. With regard to the resources, it focuses on full text and corpora with linguistic annotations. The FCS is also deeply integrated with other Clarin infrastructure components, such as Weblicht. I cannot estimate how this is compared to Daria, but you have the same integration with a tool or services level. And very important for us, the FCS is maintained by the Clarin ERIC, which is not a partner in the Claria project. So here you see a detailed result page from the virtual language observatory, the VLO, and different to the Daria generic search, we have to consider for the Clarin side of things, two main searches. They have the FCS and the VLO. In Daria, you can look at the GS and that's fine. The VLO here focuses on metadata, describing text and language corpora, tree banks and dictionaries, including tools such as taggers, classificators, and currently contains over 1.3 million records. 
interesting from an integration point of view is that the Daria collection registry is already included as an endpoint and you can find the same resources as in the generic search here. Here, for instance, a review on Thomas Mann's famous work, The Wooden Brocks, written by Rainer Maria Rilke. It's from the TextGrid repository. By the way, the TextGrid repository, as well as the DARIA.de repository and the collection registry are registered as Clarin data centers and therefore appear as endpoints in searches such as the VLO, which is, in a certain sense, already a unified search space. So it doesn't look like one, but you have uh, the collected connected data in the background. But of course, you stay within the logic of the VLO, and this comes almost certain with compromises with regard to the data presentation. So the same data looks different in the generic search than in the VLO or in the FCS, because different search interests are behind. Don't be afraid, we won't go into the details here on this slide. Uh, it's just for documentation. And I suggest you look in the upcoming Daria.de working paper, which will uh, yeah, be about the search logics and Clarin and Daria.de, and I think will be published early next year. What I want to highlight for you here um, um, is the different types of resources, or to be more precisely, the different way of searching and presenting the results. The way to present search results, for example, the full text in the FCS or the collections in the generic search is closely bound to specific research requirements, which often orient at the used tools for analyzing the data. And here, humanists may have other intentions than linguists. From a technical point of view, the differences are not that critical with look at the FCS, the VLO, and the GS. You even have the surprising fact that the Clarin service, the VLO, has technically more in common with a Daria generic search than both Clarin services to one another. So what was the outcome and what are the lessons learned? This is a screenshot of the search prototype implemented with iframes to pretend a unified search space, including the generic search, the federated content search, and the virtual language observatory. Technically, you send a search string to the three searches and retrieve a result list per search engine in a separate frame. Clicking on a resource or the search itself will usually lead you to the external website. So we have implemented only a prototype relying on iframes, and it's clear that with iframes, you only pretend to have a unified search space, but technically it isn't. The results appear then in the three tops in the Claria IDE website, but technically you are looking at the generic search, the FCS and the VLO. So this being said, I'd like to explain this approach to you. So I'm very honest here about uh, the outcomes and the results to you. As said before, as said before, we follow in Claria a parallel approach of indexing our resources as endpoints in the respective searches. So the user is in many cases already able to find text good resources in the Clarin VLO, for instance. So the 2.2 million resources should be available to a large part of the users already without a unified search. And it is also possible for a Clarin user to use Daria services and the other way around due to our AI isolation. These are very important improvements in terms of usability and accessibility, but you can't sell them in a prominent way like with a fully functional unified search. That's clear. Some conclusions. It's clear the varying user requirements and the legacy of ownership drove us to the decision to stay with the prototype and on the other hand then to publish our observations in an upcoming Daria working paper so that others may learn from it. What quickly arose as important point to us, you always have to consider possible trade-offs between user perspectives and technical harmonization. If the user requirements are abandoned on the way, the technical harmonization doesn't make much sense. There's no benefit for the researchers then you better stick with the current solutions and rethink, what, which is what we did in Clarin. So the very flat integration with iframes just pretends to offer a unified search space, but 
it may offer a solution to present resources and tools in other environments. So maybe you can see it more as an organizational invitation for others to take note of resources or services, for instance, within shock or the EOS context. So at the end of my talk, a few more general uh, conclusions. We have seen that merging organizations comes with challenges on various levels. And often it is not merely about resources, budget or person months, but about discussion and understanding, which takes time. It's a precious resource and projects. Um, it's very important to consider possible trade-offs between stakeholder groups. And with look at the infrastructure, the picture is not uh, the same for all components. So with regard to Claria merging, it was quite successful for the AAI Federation or our joint help desk or the joint monitoring. There we have uh, very substantial provider related benefits, for example, low maintenance. With look at the user related or researcher related outcomes, you have to be careful. I think that's it. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>